Hello, this is Tyagarajan. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I am going to discuss some problems and multiple choice questions related to DMA. DMA is called as direct memory access. Generally, the data from the disk will be read by the CPU and then it will be written by the CPU on the memory. Any program or data should be available in the main memory if the program is to be executed. If DMA is provided, then the data or program may be directly transferred from disk to memory bypassing the CPU. So the dotted lines show the data transfer without DMA, that is from disk to CPU, then from CPU to memory. But if DMA is provided, then the data will be transferred from disk to memory directly like this. But to perform DMA, you need a DMA controller. The DMA controller itself is a specialized processor. Actually, to access a data from the disk, an address should be provided for that data. If DMA is not available, the address will be provided by the CPU. But for DMA operation, the DMA controller will provide the address to the disk and also it will provide the address to the memory where the data block is to be stored. The DMA controller will also provide the number of bytes to be transferred and it will provide read and write and other control signals needed for transferring the block of data from disk to memory. To answer the multiple choice questions, you should understand the basics of DMA. When DMA is taking place, the CPU sets up the disk for DMA transfer. Then DMA controller begins transfer independent from CPU. When the DMA is completed, the DMA controller informs the CPU through an interrupt. There are several modes for transferring data using DMA controller. One method is called as cycle stealing. An instruction will have many clock cycles, but all the clock cycles will not be used by the CPU for executing the instructions. Some clock cycles will be free. The address and data buses will not be used by the CPU. And those clock cycles will be alerted by the CPU for DMA transfer. So in that case, few bytes will be transferred from uh, hard disk to main memory during that period. So for each instruction, there will be few unused clock cycles. And those clock cycles will be used to transfer data using DMA. This type of data transfer is called as cycle stealing. The other mode is bust mode where CPU alerts buses to the DMA for transferring the complete data block. When the data are being transferred, the CPU will not use the buses. Only the DMA controller will be accessing the buses. Now let us see a problem. A hard disk with a transfer rate of 10 megabytes per second is constantly transferring data to memory using DMA. The processor runs at 600 megahertz and takes 300 and 900 clock cycles to initiate and complete DMA transfer respectively. If the size of the transfer is 20 kilobytes, what is the percentage of processor time consumed for transfer operation? The options are given like this, 5%, 1%, 0.5% .5 and 0.1%. Let us see how to solve this. First, we will collect all the data given in the problem. Uh, the first thing is DMA transfer rate. It is given as 10 megabytes per second. So it can be written as 10 into 10 power 6. Megabytes means 10 power 6. So it will be 10 power 7 bytes per second. So the next data given is the processor frequency. It is 600 megahertz that will be equal to 600 into 10 power 6 so it can be written as 6 into 10 power 8 hertz then the number of cycles used by cpu for initiating and completing the dma transfer is 300 and 900 to initiate the dma transfer it uses 300 clock cycles after completing the DMA transfer, the DMA process should be terminated. For that, the CPU requires 900 clock cycles. So the total number of clock cycles used by the CPU is only 1200. Then next data given is the block size. It is 20 kilobytes. 
So 20 into 10 power 3, that means 2 into 10 power 4 bytes. Now, what is asked here is percentage of processor time consumed for transferring the data. So first we have to calculate the time consumed by the CPU. Actually the number of cycles is given but only the percentage of time is to be calculated. So the time consumed by the CPU is given as number of cycles used by the CPU divided by the processor frequency. So that will be equal to 1200 divided by 6 into 10 power 8. So that will be equal to 2 into 10 power minus 6 seconds. Then time consumed by DMA operation is to be calculated. So actually DMA is transferring 20 kilobytes but the transfer rate is 10 megabytes per second. So how much time it will take to transfer all these 20 kilobytes that will be given by block size divided by DMA transfer rate. So that will be equal to 2 into 10 power 4 divided by 10 power 7 and it is equal to 2 into 10 power minus 3 seconds. Now we have to calculate the percentage of time consumed by the CPU. You will be little bit confused with this term. Actually for this data transfer the CPU has initiated the DMA for that it has taken some time and DMA controller has transferred a block of data. So the total time required is nothing but the time used by the CPU plus time used by the DMA. Now the percentage of time consumed by CPU means the time consumed by the CPU divided by the total time taken for this data transfer. This includes not only the time taken by the DMA controller but also the time taken by the CPU for initiating and terminating the DMA process. So this is given by time consumed by CPU divided by time consumed by CPU plus time consumed by DMA. This is the ratio and it will be less than 1. Since percentage of time is asked, you have to multiply this ratio by 100. Now you substitute all the values. The time consumed by CPU is 2 into 10 power minus 6 divided by time consumed by CPU, the same value plus time consumed by DMA is 2 into 10 power minus 3. Now you have to add these two. Since the exponent values are different, you should make both the exponent values same. Then only you will be able to add. So you do this and you are having 2 into 10 power minus 6 divided by 10 power minus 6 you take outside. 2 plus 2000 into 100 and that will be equal to 0 0.0999 and that will be equal to 0 0.1. So option B is the correct answer. Now let us see some simple multiple choice questions and answers. An interface that provides I.O. transfer of data directly to and from the memory and peripheral is termed as DDA, Serial Interface, BR, DMA. Only in DMA the data will be directly transferred from hard disk to memory. So the correct answer is D. Let us see the next one. The transfer of large chunks of data without the involvement of the processor is done by A. User system programs B. Arbitrator C. DMA controller D. None of the above. Actually in the case of DMA controller the processor just initiate the DMA transfer and at the end the DMA uh, transfer will be stopped. So the processor is only initiating and terminating the DMA transfer. So the processor is not used for data transfer. The data is transferred using DMA process. This process will be controlled by a device called DMA controller. So the correct answer is C DMA controller. Now let us see the next one. The DMA transfers are performed by a control unit called as device interface, DMA controller, data controller, overlooker. The correct answer is DMA controller. B. Let us see the next question. After the completion of DMA transfer, the processor is notified by an acknowledgement signal, an interrupt signal, WMFC signal, 
none of the mention see at the end of the dma process the dma controller activates an interrupt so the cpu will terminate the dma process so the correct answer is b an interrupt signal let us see the next one the dma controller is connected to the a processor bus b system bus c external bus d none of the above actually all this data transfer will happen through system bus because all the devices memory hard disk all these things will be connected to a common bus which is called a system bus not processor bus it is also not called as external bus so it is the correct answer is system bus let us see the next one the technique whereby the dma controller accesses a clock cycle of other instructions to transfer data is called as i have already told that in each instruction some clock cycles will not be used by the cpu those clock cycles will be used by the dma controller to transfer the data that method is called as cycle stealing so here you have to fill up cycle stealing let us see the choices fast connecting instruction stealing cycle stealing memory stealing actually you may be tempted to choose this one also instruction stealing but it is not instruction stealing it is only cycle stealing so the correct answer is c cycle stealing let us see the next one the technique where the controller is given complete access to main memory is a cycle stealing memory stealing block mode bust mode so here the controller transfers the complete block and the name given for this method is called as burst mode not block mode so the correct answer is d burst mode let us see the next one the method which offers higher speeds of io transfer is dma memory mapping program controlled io interrupt controlled io program controlled io is very slow interrupt controlled io is faster than this one but dma is very very fast because it is done by the dma controller cpu is not involved in this process so dma controller is very very fast compared to other methods so dma is the correct answer if this video is useful Please share with your friends. If you have not subscribed to this channel, please press subscribe button and also click on the bell icon and choose the option all.